Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Well, let's continue solving problems. Um, today problems will be about trigonometry and uh, geometry with trigonometry. Two problems. Now, these uh, problems, this lecture actually is part of the course called Math, Math Plus and uh, Problems. It's presented on unisor.com. Uh, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website because together with the lecture we have a note basically uh, for this lecture which is basically like a textbook. So you can read uh, in very concise manner. Uh, I might miss something during the lecture or make a mistake and uh, I, I think that the notes are verified that they seem to be definitely better. But at the same time uh, I might say something during the lecture which I just didn't mention in the notes and that would be useful information as well. So you need both. You need the lecture with live video and uh, notes as basically a textbook for every lecture. Okay, um, now the website unisor.com contains prerequisite course called Math for Teens. Um, it's definitely, whatever is in that course is definitely used in uh, math plus and problems because I'm presenting problems based on theoretical material which is presented in the main course, main theoretical course, math routines. So I do suggest you to at least glance through that course. Um, now all the courses on unisor.com are totally free. There are no advertisements, so it's just for your consumption of knowledge. All for free and free for all. Okay, so let's get back to problems. My first problem is purely trigonomet trigonometrical. So I need a sum of sine square of x plus k times pi over n, where k is from 0 to n minus 1. So I have n components in this sum and uh, I would like to find this sum. Now, why precisely this particular one? Because the next problem, which is geometrical problem with trigonometry, will use it. So let me first concentrate on trigonometric part and then we will go for the second problem. Okay, so how can I approach it? Well, as usually, when I present the problem, it makes sense for you to pause the video and think about this problem yourself. Well, as a, as a hint, I might actually tell you that first I will convert sine square into cosine of a double angle, and uh, then I will use the results of the previous lecture where I calculated the sum of cosines. So this is my plan. Okay, so now let's just proceed. First of all, how to convert sine square into cosine of double angle. Well, again, if you don't remember the formula, I usually don't remember. I do remember what is the cosine of 2, uh, of 2 phi. That's a cosine square of phi minus sine square of phi. Now, one of the formulas which I do remember is that the sine square plus cosine square equals to 1 for every angle. So instead of cosine, I can put 1 minus sine square phi and minus another sine square phi, which can be basically written as 2 sine square, right? From which sine square of phi is equal to this 1 minus cosine of 2 phi divided by 2, right? So let me just write this formula here sine square phi is equal to one half of one minus cosine of two phi. Okay. All right, now, so let me just replace this with that. So I will have sum of n components. So one half I, I can move here. 1 minus cosine of double angle, which is uh, 2x plus k 2 pi over n. Uh, 
Now, there are there are n components of the, in this sum from 0 to n minus 1. So it's n times I repeat 1. So let me just put it, this is n over 2 minus 1 half sum of cosine to x plus k times 2 pi divided by n. Okay? That's the same thing, right? I just opened this parenthesis. It's n times 1, which is n and 1 half, and this 1 half for sum of cosines. And this is exactly what we were actually dealing with in the previous lecture. So let me just remind you the results of the previous lecture. Sum of uh, cosines of x plus ky, where k is changing from 0 to n. That was n in the previous lecture, but that doesn't remember. We will use it anyway. Equals to uh, sine of x plus Um, 2n plus 1 times y over 2 minus sine of x minus y over 2 divided by sine of y over 2. Now, this formula was derived in the previous lecture with all the details, so I'll just use it. And again, if you don't recall how it was done, um, just take a look at the previous lecture. It's on the same unisort.com. You go to mass plus uh, problems, trigonometry, and this will be trigonometry 03, because this one is trigonometry 04. All right, so I just borrowed that formula. It was derived completely without, with all the details in the previous lecture, in two ways actually de de derived. So I, I'll just use it. Now, what do I have to change in this formula? Well, the only thing I have to change is, you see, this is from k0 to k equals to n. In our case, it's to n minus 1. So if I will change it to minus 1, I have to change here to minus 1. If n is changed to n minus 1, it would be 2 times n minus 2 plus 1, so it's minus 1. So that's the only difference which I will have here. So that's exactly the same formula, just the number of members, number of terms. Instead of n plus 1, it was from 0 to n, it's n plus 1. So I put n, uh, n, n members here. All right, fine. So how can I use this formula to calculate this? To calculate this, actually. This is something which I would like to calculate. Well, they look more or less the same, but what should they change? Well, instead of x, it's 2x, fine. And instead of y, 2 pi over m, right? All right, so instead of x, put 2x. That's simple. I just put 2 here. Since, since the formula is exactly the same, 2 here and 2 here. And instead of y, I will put 2 pi divided by n. Okay, 2 pi divided by n. y over 2 would be pi divided by n. This y over 2 would be pi divided by n. And pi divided by n here. All right, so let's check what's in the numerator of this. It would be sine of 2x plus 2n times pi divided by n would be 2 pi 
minus pi over n minus sine of 2x minus pi over n. Wow, that's what's interesting. What's the difference between them? This is a difference. But sine is a periodic function, and 2 pi is a period, which means that the value of this is exactly the same as the value of this. And the whole thing actually becomes 0. And the answer is n over 2. Simple. Again, if you don't remember well, you don't remember the formula itself. I don't remember, nobody remembers this formula. But I do remember how we derived it, and I do encourage you to go to the previous lecture and take a look at the notes. There are two different ways to derive this formula, and I suggest you to basically familiarize yourself with it. I think without it, it would not really be very interesting, quite frankly. If, if I just use the ready, ready formula without basically specification how I did it, that would not be interesting. So, we have derived the answer. And the answer is n over 2. n over 2. Good. Now, this is the first problem, and now we will go to a geometrical problem where we will use the results of this one. Okay, here is an interesting geometrical problem. Let's consider you have a circle, and uh, a regular n-sided uh, polygon inscribed into this uh, circle. I choose triangle, it can be a, uh, a square, it can be five-sided uh, polygon, etc. It doesn't really matter. So, we have this, and let's call uh, these vertices A1, A2, A3. Now, this is the center. Oh. And obviously, assume that the radius is r. Now, here is the interesting problem. Take a look at any point on the circle and connect it with all vertices of, of the polygon. So if this is p, what I'm saying is that sum of p a i square where i from 1 to n so I assume it's n-sided regular polygon in my case it's just 3 doesn't really depend on the position of the point p so wherever it is sum of squares of distances to all, this, all the vertices of the polygon is exactly the same and I will calculate exactly how, what, what exactly is this particular value is. Again, what's interesting about this, regardless of position of point P, it can be anywhere on the circle, including on the vertic ver vertex itself, on any vertex, and anywhere in between, as long as it's on, this, on, on, the, on the circle. Okay? All right, so how can we approach it? Well, let's just calculate trigonometrically a particular uh, side. Let's say PA3. So I will have a perpendicular to uh, the chord PA3, and I will have this angle. Well, let's have this angle and call it call it alpha. Alpha. I by alpha I that's angle between O P and O A I T. Okay, so angle P O A I is alpha I. So we have this angle would be P O A one would be alpha one P O 
A2 would be alpha 2, PO A3 would be alpha 3, etc. Now, what's important about alpha? Let's say this is alpha 1 and this is uh, alpha 2. POA2 is alpha 2 and POA1 is alpha 1. Well, obviously alpha 2 is equal to alpha 1 plus 2 pi divided by n. Why? Because this is a regular uh, polygon, which means every angle from A1, uh, A1, 0, A2, or A2, 0, A3, or A3, 0, A1, they are all equal to 2 pi, which is the whole circle, divided by n number of um, sides. So this is equal to um, alpha 1 plus um, let's use the index k if you don't remember plus k minus 1 2 pi over n so for k is equal to 1 I have 0 so I will have only alpha 1 for uh, k is equal to 2 uh, alpha 2 will equal to alpha 1 plus 2 pi over n, like this one, etc. So every next angle PO next A k's would be equal to A first plus k minus 1 times 2 pi over n. Okay, that's simple. Now, if I do have this angle, okay, let me just draw it again. This is P, this is A, K, this is O. So, P, A, K is double, let's call it Q, K. Uh, it's double uh, P, Q, P, Q. So, it's uh, obvious that uh, the perpendicular to the chord is dividing this chord in two equal parts and divides angle in two equal parts. So this angle is alpha k's. So p q k is equal to r times um, this is r, this is half of the angle, so it's a sine times sine alpha k divided by 2. So if this is alpha k, this is alpha k divided by 2, this is pqk, so pak is equal to 2 pqk, right? pak is double pqk. So pak is equal to 2 r sine and a cut a k is equal to alpha 1 plus k minus 1 2 pi over n right and therefore We are interested in summing this thing from k equals 1 to n, right? Well, let me change slightly the variable k. Instead of k, I will use i minus 1. So this is equal to sigma a from 0 to n minus 1. Now we need square, right? So it would be sigma square. Um, so it would be 4 r square sine square of alpha first plus i 2 pi over n.
k minus 1 oh uh, I'm sorry k plus 1 so if k is equal to 1 i is equal to 0 if k is equal to n i is equal to n minus 1 and this would be i instead of k minus 1 so this is the sum which we have to calculate sum of the squares of distances from p to all a k's okay and look at this this is basically the same thing this is index k this is index i doesn't matter x is a1 alpha 1 sorry this is exactly the same uh, uh, index so it's it's all the same so the answer is for r squared times sum of these signs which is n over 2 which is 2 pi no, not pi 2 r squared 2 r squared n 2 pi again <laughs> I'm used to 2 pi r. Okay, it's uh, 2 r square times n, where n is the number of sides in our regular polygon. And as you see, it independent on the position of uh, this point p. It depends only on the radius and number of sides in the polygon. It's quite remarkable to tell you the truth. I mean, I would not expect it. If somebody tells me that some of the squares of these distances is constant, it doesn't really depend on the position, well, I would be skeptical about this. Nevertheless, calculations show exactly this. Okay, so that was my second problem. Um, now, um, I, I would like to finish it basically with a very important thing. Uh, it's the whole purpose of studying mathematics in school. I'm not talking about college where there are some specifications and uh, some directions towards some profession or industry or whatever. No, in high school it's general knowledge basically. You will not use it as much, quite frankly, in your practical life. I mean the problems like this will never probably be um, in, in your practical life. However, why do we do it? We do it exactly for the same purpose you go to gym uh, for your muscles. Solving problems is the gym for your brain. It's very important to be creative because you really have to be creative. It develops your creativity when you solve the problem which nobody told you how to solve. It's not like you're, you're given a recipe and you just basically do exactly what, what this particular recipe tells you and you come up with result. There is no recipe. I mean, whenever you facing something like this, you have to think about, okay, how do I approach it? Well, sine square, kind of complicated, let's convert it into cosine. Whenever we have to uh, summarize the cosines, well, we, we used to do it before. And that's exactly the purpose, because the more problems you solve, the uh, wider will be your repertoire of different uh, approaches, different tools, how to solve new problems. So that's why it's very important first present the theory, which I did in Math uh, 14 course, and then some, well, obviously some uh, maybe easier problems and illustrative, illustrative problems were in that course, but problems which do require a certain level of creativity, I do present in this course. And that's why I suggest you to, to go diligently from one problem to another, <coughs> and try to solve them yourself. I mean, if you don't solve it, it's fine, then read the uh, notes or uh, watch the lecture. But the more you watch, the more you read, the wider will be your horizons and the better will be your um, chest of tools which, which you can use to solve different problems. And that's what will prepare you to solve the practical problems whenever you will be working somewhere in whatever industry you will be. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, again, suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. And good luck.